Robots can be found everywhere nowadays, working in our factories, vacuuming our floors, and even driving our cars. But like many hard workers, they can also be found playing sports. I'm here at the At Bristol Science Museum, where 26 teams from around the world are pitting their robots against each other in some of the most intense sporting competitions known to RoboKind. You thought you'd seen some amazing athletes at the Olympics? Well, wait until you see these guys. Welcome to the Robo World Cup. The FIRA Robo World Cup is designed to encourage cutting edge research in robotics and the development of platforms that implement all sorts of systems from servo motors to autonomous machine learning. It's also a chance to have some fun in the process. It's an annual international competition, um, primarily uh, robot soccer, but in fact other events, so there are other robot um, sports events. Yeah, and this is the first time in fact uh, the event has been in the UK. Well, it's primarily to provide um, a forum to allow uh, researchers and, and, and student teams, primarily student teams, to compete against each other in robot sports. The, the wonderful thing, of, of course, of, of, about soccer is that everyone knows the rules of soccer, yet it's a tremendously difficult thing to do technically uh, to, to build and, and run a group of autonomous mobile robots competing um, in soccer. Having the competition in the UK is also an opportunity to promote robotics and engineering to young people. And there's a chance for international glory. The UK is fielding two teams this year, one from Bristol University in UWE and another from Plymouth University. And as in the real world, Team GB has so far had better form in athletics than football. My name's Peter Gibbons. I'm a research, robot football research assistant at Plymouth University. Uh, and this is one of our robots. This is our current um, world champion and world record holder at both the sprint and the marathon event here at um, the Robo World Cup, the FIRA Robo World Cup. So our two main focuses are to try and retain um, our world records and our world titles. Um, after that, we're looking to develop uh, our robot football team. So we're looking to enter the, the soccer team. Um, we're hoping to have five robots um, play in a five-a-side for the first time. Um, although that's quite a technical challenge and it's the first year that we've entered. So that's, that's where we, we believe the future lies for, for our robots and to con continue our tradition in robot football. A robot here has got a web camera inside here and that's placed inside a head. The head has been rapid prototyped um, using a 3D printer. Um, then we have a body that has been laser cut in Perspex. Um, and what sits underneath is a processor. This particular one's called a Beagle Board and it's about 800 megahertz. The camera takes a picture 30 frames per second and then the processing board will process the information looking for different colors and different shapes about 30 times a second. And then the information is transferred through a th serial communication to a small Atmel processor at the back here. And this is responsible for controlling the motors. So this will send the information of what speed and what angle the motors need to turn to. And this will allow it to make the legs walk and then we can control how high the, the robot lifts its feet and how far forward it positions its feet and also other, other factors such as how much the robot needs to tilt forward to be able to get its balance. Inside here we have a lithium polymer battery so the, this powers the robot and the robot currently works at about 12 volts and this will last approximately about 20 minutes before it needs recharging. I'd hope to think that we can regain our world titles. That's the aim. So that's what we'll be focusing on primarily. Um, at the moment, Singapore um, have taken some of our technology that's been published. Uh, so they've been able to implement it on their robot uh, and then looking quite dangerous this year. So they, they came second in the sprint last year. Uh, and also there's a, a Canadian team that came second in the marathon. So they're our main com competitors we're keeping an eye on this year. Watching the robots compete is surprisingly tense despite the stop-start nature of many of the events when some of the players reach a stalemate. And just like in the human sport, the footballing robots do fall over a lot. Although they seem able to get back on their feet much quicker than a lot of premiership footballers. Well, most of the time anyway. <laughs> 